Hello. In this video, we will discuss how to calculate the amount of work done, specifically the amount of work done by a spring. Imagine an individual applying a constant force, F, to push an object along a straight path for a given distance, D. The work done to move the object is given by work equals force times distance. This is known as the constant force formula for work. And here we see a picture of a person moving an object along a straight path. What if we have a variable force acting on an object moving along a line? How do we then calculate the work? Well, we generally proceed with two methods, both of which apply the idea of partition and sum that we've seen throughout this chapter. One option is to partition the path, which is a line, into short segments. We then apply equation one, which was the constant force equation, treating the nearly constant force applied over the line segment to get the change in the amount of work done, delta W sub K, to be approximately the force times delta X sub K, which is the small amount of distance along the linear path. We then sum the small amounts of work to get the total amount of work done. A second option is to partition the object being moved into small pieces and calculate the amount of work done by applying the force to move each piece the distance D. So therefore, the small amount of work done, delta W sub K, is approximately delta F of K sub K times the distance. We then sum these small amounts of work. When calculating work using the British system of measurement, we'll measure distance by feet and force in pounds. Therefore, work will be the foot pound. When calculating work in the international system of units, distance will be measured in meters, force in newtons, so that work will be in joules, a newton meter. Let's calculate the work done in stretching a spring four tenths of a meter from its relaxed state. The force exerted by the spring when it has been stretched five hundredths of a meter has magnitude 30 newtons. In this problem, the force acting on the object varies since the spring resists stretching or compressing. Hooke's law states that the force, F, in newtons, needed to extend and hold the spring X units from its natural and resting position is proportional to X. In other words, we say F is that spring constant K times X. So here we have a spring. The first thing that we do is we set up a, a measuring system where its resting position is at zero. And we must find the spring constant K associated with the spring. So if we stretch, stretch the spring from its resting position at zero meters to a position five hundredths of a meter away, then we, we've been told that there's a magnitude of 30 newtons of force involved. So we set up 30 newtons is equal to the constant times five hundredths meter. Solving for K, we get K to be 600 newtons per meter. Since the force of the spring varies at different points of the path, we must consider the work needed to stretch the spring over a small distance. We partition the linear path over the interval from x going from 0 to 4 tenths. And here we see where we've partitioned the interval from 0 to 4 tenths. The amount of work required to apply a force needed to stretch the spring x sub k units from its resting position over a displacement of delta x sub k units is given by delta W sub k, so the small amount of work done, is approximately the force at x sub k times x sub k minus x sub k minus 1. Or in other words, we've applied a nearly constant force over a very small linear distance. Since I know that the force is that spring constant k times x sub k, I can rewrite the amount of work done over the small distance to be approximately 600 x sub k times delta x sub k and our units are newton meters. So to calculate the whole amount of work done to stretch the spring from 0 to 4 tenths of a meter, I simply sum up the small amounts of, small amounts of work. So that w is the limit as the norm of the partition goes to 0 of the sum k going from 1 to n of 600 x sub k times delta x sub k this limit gives us the definite integral of 600x dx on the interval from 0 to 4 tenths because that's the interval that we partitioned. And finishing out the problem, we calculate that the amount of work done is 48 joules. Let's review the big ideas from this video. 
The amount of work done to apply a constant force F to move an object a distance d units along a line is given by the constant force formula for work. Work is equal to force times distance. Using the constant force formula for work and the concepts of partition and sum, we can calculate the amount of work done when applying a variable force to move an object on a linear path. When calculating the amount of work done to stretch or compress a spring, we use Hooke's law, which says that the amount of force required to maintain a spring stretched or compressed x units from its natural resting position is proportional to x, or force is equal to a spring constant at k times x, and we partition the straight path the object takes to consider a nearly constant force applied to the object over a small distance. And finally, apply units. Units are important as they provide insight as to whether you are on the right solution path.